Good morning, afternoon, and evening. Thank you all for joining today's webinar to learn more about Malawi's first dietetics program. My name is Katie Hennevelt, and I am an assistant researcher for the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Nutrition, and will be your MC for this webinar today. As the attendees are joining, I will begin by going, going over some housekeeping items. I'd like to direct all attendees um, to a few functions on this Zoom webinar. At the bottom of your screen, you should see a chat icon and a Q&A icon. Um, use the chat feature to engage in relevant conversation with other attendees. If you have a question for one of the panelists, please use the Q&A feature. Panelists will respond to questions in the Q&A box throughout the webinar as they are able, and we have allotted the final 25 minutes of this webinar for Q&A. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties, send a message in the chat box to all panelists so that our technical support staff can work with you to resolve them. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available on the Innovation Lab for Nutrition website and the USAID Advancing Nutrition website. There you can register for upcoming webinars and view recordings and slide decks of previous webinars. We will repeat these technical housekeeping items in the chat throughout the webinar as people may join at later times. The moderator for today is Elizabeth Marino Costello. She is, she is a registered dietitian and senior program manager for the Nutrition Innovation Lab, as well as clinical instructor and academic and career advisor for the graduate science programs at the Friedman School of Nutrition Science and Policy. Elizabeth has been in the field of dietetics for over 20 years as a practicing clinical dietitian, clinical nutrition director for Aramark Healthcare Division, and hospital administrator at Tufts Medical Center. She has been with the Nutrition Innovation Lab since its inception 10 years ago, overseeing partner awards, financials, as well as supporting the nutrition capacity building activities of the lab in all countries. In addition, her role at the Friedman School supports student admissions and advising for both the dietetics and masters in nutrition science and policy programs. Liz will begin by giving a brief background of the lab before introducing today's speakers and panelists. Liz, over to you. Well, thank you, Katie, um, and welcome everyone. We have quite a, a group today. Uh, Grace, next slide. This map shows the work of our Feed the Future Innovation Lab. The Nutrition Lab is supported by USAID Bureau of Resilience and food security and the nutrition innovation lab is the group hosting the webinar series today our nutrition lab is active in supporting research and capacity to build the evidence around critical questions linking agriculture nutrition and health as you see on the map our work is both in sub-saharan africa and south asia for more details on our research by country and also uh, details about this webinar or the webinar series, please visit our, web, our website at nutritioninnovationlab.org. Next slide. We certainly, next slide. We certainly cannot do all this work alone. The Nutrition Innovation Lab is a consortium led by the Friedman School of Nutrition Science and Policy at Tufts University. Next slide. Our U.S. government partners and our country partners are um, on this slide. Uh, our collaborators we're so grateful for. Um, in particular, uh, the Longwe University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, University of Malawi, College of Medicine, um, representatives from both of our core partners uh, speaking today. Next slide. So let's begin. Today's webinar is the ninth in our webinar series and a little slightly different from the previous webinar topics. Today's main focus highlights our Nutrition Lab's capacity building efforts, specifically zeroing in in Malawi. Those efforts are around building the first ever Malawian dietetics program. 
We are so very pleased today to have with us our collaborators and partners from Malawi who have been with us from the start and will be different perspectives that include education, policy, medicine, and healthcare. So that's what's going to make today so interesting. Our first speaker will be Bernadette Chimera Kombe. She holds a rather unique um, to Malawi position in the dietetics program. She's the clinical coordinator. Uh, and she, by being the clinical coordinator, she provides direction to the dietetics students during their hands-on clinical rotations in the hospitals. And having been through those rotations as a medical student, um, Bernadette's uh, value is, is really uh, so uh, helpful to, to our students. She brings to the dietetics program over five years of clinical experience. Yes, sorry, I think everybody, uh, we're just trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, I think we lost Liz Marino Costello and um, um, the, I'm just going to figure out, can everybody hear me on the panel? Uh, yes, yes uh, Shibani, we can hear you. Okay, so, so I think we lost one colleague of ours who is the moderator. <laughs> Um, and um, so let me jump in. My name's um, Shabani Ghosh. Um, I am the Associate Director for the Nutrition Innovation Lab. And um, I was not meant to be the moderator, so I'm gonna take on this role until we get um, uh, Liz Marino Costello back online. Um, I think Grace, if you don't mind going back to the presentation because I, we have seen your recording slide and not your, um, yeah, so please, thank you. Back one slide, please. Great. So um, welcome everybody um, from my end. And I think Liz was giving a very nice introduction to uh, Bernadette um, Chimera Kombe. And so I'll move on and introduce the rest of the panel. Um, we have Lynn Ausman, who is a professor of biochemistry at Tufts University, who is gonna be joining us. And she's been part of the program from the, uh, the start. Uh, Lynn is also a endowed chair at the Friedman School of Nutrition Science and Policy and is the director of the, uh, the um, master's program in nutrition science and policy. Um, we also have Sanali Nakomani, who is the, um, the lead on the ground from Tufts University. She's a registered dietitian um, and um, is uh, based in Malawi for Tufts University. And she um, works very closely with Bernadette and the team members at Luanar and College of Medicine. Um, on our panel discussion, uh, we will have uh, Professor Manani, Tina Manani, who is from the Lilongwe University of Agriculture and Natural Resources. Um, we will also have Professor Alexander Kalim Kalimbira um, and um, we on the um, College of Medicine, we will have Professor John Fuka um, and from the Ministry of Health, um, we will have Dr. Janet Gouda, who is part of the Department of Clinical Services and who has been a critical, critical member of um, uh, this program to move this program forward in the direction of supporting human and institutional capacity around dietetics in Malawi. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Bernadette Chimera, who is going to be the first speaker. She will be followed by Lynn Ausman and then Sanale Nakomani, and then we will break into the panel discussion. Uh, we apologize if there are any issues related to uh, Wi-Fi and related to any breakdown um, on our end. We do know that all our colleagues from Malawi might have some issue on their internet. So we are planning to, um, we will have some pre-recorded remarks if we lose any of our colleagues. So thank you everybody for joining us and I'm going to hand over to Bernadette. Bernadette, the floor is yours. All right, uh, thank you Shivani for the introduction. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone joining us, depending on where you're joining us from. To kick off this webinar, I'll give a presentation on the state of nutrition in Malawi. Knowledge that the landscape of nutrition in Malawi is quite broad. So for the purposes of this webinar, this presentation will provide a brief description on the current state of clinical nutrition services in Malawi. 
I will highlight the progress made in achieving better nutrition for the population, and I will continue to describe prevailing challenges that are now being addressed by registered dietitians who have been locally trained through institution, institutions that have undergone commendable capacity building through this program. Next slide, please. So, like in any country, nutrition is a priority area in Malawi. This is because we acknowledge that nutrition is essential for the success of all sustainable development goals, and that nutrition is both a maker and a marker for development. And so we believe improved nutrition is inevitably a platform for progress in health, education, employment, empowerment of women, and reduction of poverty and inequality in Malawi. Next slide, please. We also know that without adequate and sustained investments in good nutrition, these SDGs will not be realized due to extensive losses attributed to the cost of malnutrition in Malawi. For instance, in 2012 alone, Malawi lost 597 million US dollars to health, education, and productivity losses. Therefore, it is for this reason that the government, academia, and partners such as the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Nutrition continue to increase their focus on impactful nutrition interventions in all sectors in Malawi. Next slide, please. So, so far, what has been Malawi's progress in nutrition? Next slide, please. Well, based on a 15-year trend in the demographic health survey, it shows a decline in all components of undernutrition with, an, with a significant decrease of 18% in chronic malnutrition. Additionally, we also see specific progress in micronutrient profiles, showing a decline in deficiency in vitamin A, iron, and iodine. Next slide, please. So whilst we have such commendable progress for nutrition in Malawi, in the next slides, I'll discuss persistent and emerging nutrition challenges, and perhaps provide a background into the gaps that this program and the dietitians it has trained are filling in Malawi. Notably, we see that our challenges are evolving from specific undernutrition concerns to dealing with the double burden of malnutrition. And we will see in the presentations and discussions that follow how the government is adapting its interventions to meet these evolving needs. Next slide, please. So as in most parts of the world, non-communicable diseases are a problem for everyone. And historically in Malawi, societal perspective was that NCDs were for the affluent. However, in recent studies, like those conducted by Siambos and Price, it states otherwise. We're seeing NCDs rise in both rural and urban areas, in both male and female populations. And so for this reason, it is evident that we require trained nutrition professionals at all levels of healthcare service if we're to effectively and efficiently address the burden of NCDs in Malawi. Next slide, please. From the next slide, this slide that we have now, we see there is an evident increase in overnutrition and diabetes by sex over the past years, uh, which is worse in the female population in Malawi. And this speaks further to the need for more trained nutrition professionals who can meet the population needs as per these uh, graphs shown on the slide. Next slide, please. So in addition to NCDs, like most African countries, Malawi continues to put efforts in promoting, providing, and promoting optimal clinical nutrition care. However, we're not yet where we hope to be. So in, in recent, for instance, in recent studies for, by uh, Blau and friends, the study showed that 61% of hospital admissions in Africa are at risk of malnutrition, therefore leading to a prolonged hospital stay of patients and the need for individualized nutrition care. Unfortunately, if this, is, if this care is not given, approximately 70% of admitted patients are likely to weigh less on hospital discharge. Even though we do not have Malawi-specific data, this begs the question, is the clinical setting therefore also contributing to community malnutrition? Since we're discharging our patients into the community weighing less than they did on admission. In the absence of a registered dietitian in practice who provides individualized nutrition services in hospital, what we'll see is a vicious cycle of malnutrition. Next. However, 
as you see on this slide, the introduction of registered dietitians in the healthcare team would positively contribute to the improvement of patient outcomes in Malawi and Africa in general. Now, when we go specifically to Malawi, next slide, please. Specifically to Malawi, the positive impact of a registered dietitian's introduction into a health team could be shown as is on this slide. It is also notable that qualitative research around a nutrition support program led by a dietitian at Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital in Blanta, Malawi, showed that nurses and physicians who worked alongside the dietitian valued the role of nutrition support in improving quality of care. So in Malawi, having a hospital dietitian, having a dietitian in hospital could lead to uh, improved individualized care, equal attention to adult nutrition care, just as it is given to pediatric nutrition, and the presence of nutrition counseling services in NCD outpatient clinics. It also gives an opportunity for the healthcare team to refer cases with specific nutrition concerns to the dietitian across all levels of healthcare delivery. Next slide, please. So the presence of sound clinical nutrition care structures and resources is even more pertinent now in the face of the COVID pandemic. It is important to anticipate challenges exerted by COVID-19 on delivery of clinical nutrition services in fragile health systems such as Malawi. Knowing that in the absence of a specific clinical nutrition response, hospital malnutrition will likely increase in both COVID-19 patients and other hospitalized patients in countries like Malawi, and this can be due to challenges such as the need for specialized nutrition for COVID patients who are likely to be on ventilation for longer duration, the lack of access to food for hospitalized patients who are served by a food service system that is anchored by food brought in by guardians. Now these guardians no longer have adequate access to hospital premises due to physical distancing. And we also anticipate a lack of access to continuity of nutrition care in NCD outpatient clinics following the scaling down of outpatient clinics in response to physical distancing guidelines. Next. So for these reasons, there is need, for, there is need to build capacity for dietitian training and include nutrition personnel such as dietitians in the COVID-19 response at facility level at facility level in order to address both immediate and enduring nutrition challenges posed by COVID-19. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So the survival of nutrition in Africa is the slide before. The survival of nutrition in Africa is hinged on sound capacity building. And based on the evolving nutrition challenges that I've presented now, these challenges call for adequate nutrition professionals and capacity building in local training institutions. However, Malawi, like most African countries, faces more acute challenges with respect to dietitian training programs as compared to general nutritionist pro training programs whose curricula are largely community oriented. Next slide. From a broader perspective, Africa in general faces a shortage of RD training programs with up to 60% of African countries having no programs at all. And only a handful of countries have regulatory structures such as standards of practice, codes of ethic, and scope of practice for dietitian. Additionally, most African countries lack opportunities for networks and policies on continuous professional development in dietetics. For instance, as of 2013, South Africa and Nigeria were the only African countries to be members of the International Confederation of Dietetics Association. Even though we acknowledge that we need more collaborations with international, regional, and local institutions to build capacity, as has been shown in the implementation of Malawi's first dietetics program. So for this reason, we realize the importance of sharing the experiences in developing a dietetics program in a resource constrained setting where leveraging of partnerships and collaborations has led to the genesis of the dietetics profession in Malawi. Next slide. So coming to this point, I will end my presentation and I thank you for paying attention. And I urge you to stay on as I hand over to Prof. Lynn Osman, who will share the process of, curriculum of the curriculum development of Malawi's first dietetics program. Thank you. Over to you, Lynn. Thank you, Bernadette. Um, 
Good morning or good afternoon to everybody online. This section of our webinar is devoted to how the dietetics program was developed once the need had been identified. Next slide, please. As Bernadette already mentioned, nutrition is an important part of the goals of the National Nutrition Policy and Strategic Plan that was developed between 2007 and 2012. So a variety of professionals, including educators, <coughs> excuse me, clinicians and allied health personnel will be needed for these efforts. And Malawi already has several groups of people ready to tackle nutrition problems, but it does not have registered dietitians. Next slide, please. Let us first understand the definition of a dietitian. Dietitian is a medical professional qualified to assess, diagnose, and treat dietary and nutrition related problems at an individual and public health level. There is a set course curriculum and there are set clinical training placements. They are the only nutrition experts that are regulated by law and they are licensed to practice with an RD title. They're also governed by a code of ethics. Next slide, please. Once the probable need for more nutrition training and competency was identified, it was time for a serious needs assessment. And this was done in 2012, 2013. A wide variety of stakeholders were polled regarding their view of the need for dietitians in Malawi. And these included the ministries of health and agriculture, the College of Medicine, various tertiary and secondary hospitals, NGOs, academic institutions, and food and agricultural organizations. They were asked if they could see a need for dietitians in Malawi. And if so, how would they be used and where would they be employed? What could be their career path? As you can imagine, the result was emphatically positive and this is something that Malawi needed. Next slide, please. From the beginning, Luanar was identified as the site to develop this dietetics program. It already had a rich bachelor's degree in nutrition and food science so that any new program could depend on these resources and build from there. The actual work began in 2013 with a grant from USAID to the Nutrition Innovation Lab at Tufts that allowed us to help Luanar faculty design and implement the program. We worked with Luanar to identify possible faculty for teaching in the program, and if these weren't immediately available in the department, there were other departments at Luanar and also at other educational institutions. Next slide, please. Our challenge was to develop a course curriculum that was right for Malawi, but that also took advantage of standards that were developed internationally. So examples include the standards for the International Dietetics Association, as well as the Dietetics Associations in Ghana, South Africa, Britain, Australia, and the United States. Again, stakeholders were extremely important in order to help identify specific resources, especially for the unit and the acute clinical placements. We were also very pleased when the College of Medicine in Blantyre and Lalongwe was able to collaborate with us in providing uh, biochemical instructors with clinical components in their instruction to help teach the entire two semester course in nutritional biochemistry. Faculty and other of the schools at Luanar were able to teach the two semester quantitative units. And even in the School of Nursing, there was a unit on ethics and uh, patient counseling. So once the program was designed though, it was, had to be improved, uh, approved at the departmental level and then at the Senate level. And obviously this process took a few iterations with every change improving the program. Next slide, please. Now, once the program was designed and approved at Lunar, we needed to seek approval from the Medical Council of Malawi. We worked most closely with Mr. Kandwani Kanduwiri, who was then the Assistant Registrar of Professional Practice at the Medical Council of Malawi. He was very helpful right from the beginning and I might add quite tough. He, as we all wanted to make sure that this program was top notch and was addressing the needs uh, specified in our assessments. There were no roadmaps on how to do accreditation for a dietetics program. 
So we tried to model our documentation after medicine um, and other allied um, health sciences. We ended up working with a consultant who was adept at preparing these types of documents. And a committee of professionals was formed by the Medical Council to evaluate our submission, which included a several hour in-person meeting um, Alex Calambira was there with me where we had to answer questions. The program was subsequently approved and we gained accreditation in February of 2016. Next slide, please. The overall program was 20 month postgraduate diploma, which included 30 weeks, that is two semesters of classroom time and another 1200 hours of clinical placements. The emphasis was on medical nutrition therapy, nutritional biochemistry, counseling, um, behavior change, and ethics. We also had research skills, and these were emphasized through statistics, nutritional epidemiology, and research methods. Next slide, please. There were 30 weeks of those 1,200 hours of clinical practice, which included six weeks of surgery and clinical care six weeks of adult medicine, eight weeks of pediatric care, four weeks of community nutrition, four weeks of food service management, and two weeks of research. We were extremely fortunate that the critical care placements could take place at advanced teaching hospitals, the Groot Schuur and Red Cross in Cape Town, with well-developed dietetics departments. This has continued for the first two cohorts, as our program matures in Malawi, this acute clinical placements will eventually be switched to Malawi hospitals. Next slide, please. Now, evaluation is always an important part of developing, implementing, and fine-tuning a program. After the first cohort, we had a complete review of each course and the program. And while the courses and program appear to be accomplishing our assigned tasks, we did identify a couple of challenges. Accordingly, we developed a writing course for cohort two to reinforce our writing skills, as well as a bridging course in medical terminology. And this really helped prepare the students for the coursework to come. Cohort two has now finished their coursework and clinical placements. And we are now in the midst of an extensive program review using outside consultants from developed dietetics programs. We aim to cover all aspects of the courses and the programs, including the sustainability of the program. And with that, I will turn you over to Sanale Nkamani, um, MSRD. Right, thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, um, and good morning for those who are further afield. I will take you through the key achievements, the lessons learned and future directions of the dietetics program and professional practice in Malawi. Next slide. Some of our notable key achievements over the past six years include establishing the program itself. And we are very proud to have a full approved curriculum, established clinical internship sites with two cycles of students who have completed training. Through the program and its graduates, we have seen growth in the practice of dietetics, especially in the public sector, where the first registered dietitians were employed about two years ago. These dietitians have been placed in the first dietetics department in a Malawian public hospital. We've also, we've also been heavily involved in clinical nutrition capacity building of doctors, nurses, among other health professionals and food service staff in hospitals. To date, with a team of less than 15, we have trained 407 health professionals from 10 different institutions in Malawi. These trainings initially started with sensitization on the role of dietitians, but they've expanded more to more advanced training on topics like enteral and parenteral feeding and other disease-specific nutrition care plans. Another key achievement is the building of capacity for teaching and precepting through mentoring faculty from our partner institutions, the College of Medicine and Luana. We are also mentoring graduates to take up teaching roles in the future. Next slide, please. Thus far, the program has produced 10 graduates, which has more than tripled the number of practicing dietitians in Malawi. So to highlight some of our student achievements, 
uh, I'd just like to highlight the capacity building activities that the students have been uh, taking part in, that they have done through journal clubs, in-service training and case presentations. We found that not only did these activities educate clinicians on the role of dietitians, but also the students gained confidence by interacting with a multidisciplinary team at a very early stage of their career. Also built into their curriculum was a major quality improvement element where students were challenged to, to develop new products, services, and protocols that would improve the quality of nutrition care. Next, please. Our students were engaged in a variety of projects from developing therapeutic menus to feeding protocols at various units of the hospital to developing referral criteria and tools such as hygiene and sanitation audits. Um, on your screen are examples of student work. On the left hand side is an example of a journal club that was presented to qualified professionals by a student. And on the right hand side is a referral criteria which was also developed by a student. We are very proud of this work because many of these tasks have been incorporated into routine hospital practice. Next slide. I would just like to pick up from where my colleague Bernadette uh, left off and highlight really that the nutrition challenges that she outlined, um, she quite well outlined in Malawi, are not unique to just Malawi. Many other countries in sub-Saharan Africa are experiencing a double burden of malnutrition with prevailing high rates of undernutrition and a rising, rising rates of overweight obesity and NCDs. We also have very serious challenges with hospital-based nutrition interventions and support in many of our hospitals. Bernadette touched on the role that nutrition plays in, in the recovery of hospitalized patients, yet for many hospitals in Malawi and in our region, there's limited attention given to nutrition support. Compounding to, compounding to these issues is the fact that more than 60% of our countries in Africa lack the human resource capacity to tackle these problems head on by not training dietitians. So we put to the audience that there's an urgent need for the expansion of, dietetics, of the dietetics profession in Africa. And this can only be done by making training more available and making training a priority. Hence, we believe that our program can be replicated in other countries with similar situations, and these countries can learn from how things were done in Malawi. Next slide. So with that, I would like to present a couple of lessons learned. The first, being, the first lesson is to develop a program that responds to the contextual needs of the country. In Malawi, we took several steps to understand the context, which started with several scoping visits to map out the stakeholders and how nutrition and health programs were delivered in the country. We also carried out an extensive analysis of the national nutrition and health policy and strategic directions, and we identified where dietitians can contribute to these. We also, as Lynn, uh, my colleague Lynn uh, alluded to, we also performed a needs assessment. Uh, finally, er we also engaged in early and sustained engagement with stakeholders, particularly the government who were crucial in getting the uh, country ownership of the program. Next, please. As a result of these actions, we believe this program responds directly to the needs of Malawi, which were identified to be the need to address the rising prevalence of the overweight, obesity, and NCD pand pandemic, and also to look into the hospital-based nutrition support, including critical care, and also uh, a clinical nutrition research agenda. Next slide. Following up on the last slide, the second lesson is the need for early and sustained engagement with stakeholders and advocacy. This process starts with accurately identifying who your influencers and decision makers are. In our case, we had many, but I would like to highlight the role of the Ministry of Health, particularly the Department of Clinical Services and the Department of Nutrition, HIV and AIDS in Malawi. We went on a campaign of raising awareness and sensitizing them on the gap that, that dietitians fill in clinical care. We kept them engaged through frequent updates and developed very good relationships, particularly with them. We used, we used site visits to hospitals with senior government officials to show how dietitians fit into clinical practice and the consequences of their absence. absence. Next, please. Next, please. We believe these strategic uh, these these we believe these strategies contributed to the very positive response we received from government. Sorry, just go back. Yes. 
We believe these uh, strategies contributed to the very positive response we received from government, which has led to 27 new government funded posts created for dietitians and our graduates are already employed by government months after graduating. This is very impressive considering that, that the existing vacancy rates of health professionals in Malawi are quite high. To this point, we're very proud to have Mrs. Guta, uh, Mrs. Janet Guta, who has come in as one of our panelists in this webinar and has been one of many senior government officials that took ownership of the program right from the beginning. We believe too that the creation of these posts contributed to the growing interest in the program seen by a threefold increase in applications from the first to the second cohort. Next slide. Finally, on the lessons learned is the need to leverage strengths of local, regional, and global partnerships to develop and implement a quality program. This program was built on, a, on the collaboration between Luana and COM, who brought together their respective strengths to build a quality program. I must emphasize that at the start, no one institution in Malawi had the sole capacity to implement all elements of the program. We also relied heavily on the international partnership, who in this case was Tufts University, who mainly brought the dietetics content expertise, the leadership and coordination in, in the development of the program. Next. Our other local, regional, other local and regional partners also came to raise the standard of training by providing preceptor and mentoring support to students and benchmarking their training programs with ours. Here, I must highlight the support that we received from the University of Cape Town, who took students on a six week practical rotation to practice with nutrition support resources that were not available in Malawi at the time. I would also like to highlight the role of our very experienced nutrition professionals in Malawi who played a very important role in mentoring our students and some of them are mentioned already on the slide. Next slide. On the academic side, future priorities include the need to sustain and expand the program through mentoring future leaders of the, of the program. And by that, we need to mentor instructors, preceptors, and researchers. We have made some progress with, the, with Luana and COM faculty that we have trained in clinical dietetics. Building a critical mass of dietitians is also a priority, and we need to do that at all levels of healthcare. Um, we are planning to do that really by supporting an undergraduate program and also supporting specialization of dietitians in various disciplines. In her presentation, my colleague Bernadette highlighted the gaps in clinical nutrition research that we have in Malawi. Hence, we need to develop a research agenda for the dietetics field that is generating Malawian specific knowledge that will inform practice in our setting. This is already on the cards with the establishment of a nutrition center of excellence at Luana. Next slide, please. On the professional practice side, we need to focus our attention on regulation of practice. This is very important for the integrity of a relatively new profession like dietetics. Establishing an association is an important first step, and we've made some progress there by first identifying all the qualified dietitians in Malawi, and we do interact with each other on, a va on various platforms. We also have an interim secretariat with whom we've had we with whom we have developed draft code of ethics and a scope of practice for dietitians. We're working on registering the association form formally. We're also lobbying for the protection of the registered dietitian title, which should be legally protected. Also, we need to ensure that there's a standard for education and a standard for the registration for dietitians. For that, we're working with the medical council to enact, to enact these standards, which already exist actually, they've already been drafted and have gone through several levels of review by qualified dietitians in the country. Very important too is that we need to consider continuous professional development to be mandatory for all practicing dietitians. Next slide please. Finally, we need to create a conducive, conducive practice environment for our graduates. Learning from other professions, we know that the practice conditions will be a major push factor in retention of our dietitians, uh, especially where they are needed the most, which is in government. This is why we need, the po we need policy that supports practice, including resource allocation for dietetic support services, procurement of equipment and nutrition support. All these are necessary for them to do their job well. The good news is that the government is very supportive of this and is taking steps to improve this. Lastly, we need to address equitable distribution of dietetic services. 
by continuing to advocate for establishing dietetic departments at all other tertiary hospitals and cascading down to districts and rural areas. Next slide, please. Finally, I would like to end my portion of the presentation with uh, showing you our first cohort of dietitians that just that graduated and a really nice quote from one of them about his experience and what this meant for him. And then with that, I'll hand it back to Liz to present the panel. Thank you for the attention. Well, thank you, Sanalei. I really appreciate it. I um, want to thank everyone for the questions. We do see them coming in. And I want to um, make sure to let you all know that uh, we will address the questions right after the panelists. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing the panel of experts we have put together today. Uh, they've been our partners from the creation of the dietetics program. The panelists represent views and lenses from the government, university, and healthcare institutions. Our first panelist will be Janet Guta, Deputy Director, Nutrition Management for the healthcare sector in the government of Malawi. Janet is a public health nutrition specialist with 16 years experience in the field of public health and nutrition, working with international organizations, academics, and public and private sectors. Janet has helped guide the establishment of the dietetics program, and we thank her so much in Malawi at the policy level from the beginning stages of the program and has been key in establishing the first registered dietitian and job positions in the hospitals. So I think with that, I'll turn it over to Janet. And um, thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues. And thank you, Elizabeth, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to all colleagues who are around. Yeah, um, I just wanted to share my experience in this direct programs and what we've learned so far. I was indeed involved right from the start and uh, now I'm speaking on behalf of Ministry of Health specifically Department of Clinical Services. So I interacted with the students as they started the program. I, also, I was also a part of the delegation. You uh, suddenly mentioned that there was a visit to Cape Town. I was one of, part of the delegation that went there just to learn and see how it's done. And as Malawi, Part of the, the delegation that went to Cape Town was also one of the deputy directors for human resource development and management, which was a very good motivation for us all, because I, by that time we were already trying, in trying to create an enabling environment for the program that I had studied. We are trying to create positions. So when we went there, when we had an opportunity to see what is happening in Cape Town, what dietitians do, so we are even motivated further, so much so that when we came back, it was easier now for our colleagues from the human resource to help and also to advocate for creation of um, these positions. So already in Malawi, we had an enabling environment for this program for dietitian because then we had already a policy, a policy in place, which is the uh, Malawi nutrition policy, which has the priority to prevent and manage undernutrition, prevent and manage overnutrition and all other nutrition related conditions. So that was one of our enabling environment. We're able to create positions and also to facilitate the recruitment of the first dietitians that we trained. They are all recruited. And now already we are also already working on uh, recruitment of the second batch that have been trained. And the, um, so far also to support this directive uh, program, what we've done as a country is quantification and costing of the needs. Because we know that they are in the facilities, for them to work, they will need supplies, they will need equipment. So we've already done that and submitted to the head of pharmacy so that they can submit to Central Medical Source Trust, which is where all facilities order their um, drugs and those other me me medical supplies. In addition to that, for our program in Malawi, because it was the first ever, what we did was for the first posting of the of the graduates that we had, we all posted the Matka Musen Hospital, which is our referral hospital for Central Region of Malawi, where 
the way to set up a dietetic, uh, dietetics unit, learn on how best to establish it, but at the same time also help with the uh, training or any other support that they were meant to give to that we're still training. Um, Tufts University and all other partners we've been able to do. And now, moving forward, what we, we're doing as a country already through the um, functional review that the Minister of Health has undertaken, we are already creating some posts. Um, for now, we ta the target is to have posts in all the five cent hospitals of Malawi, and from there, looking ahead, we plan to go even to the district hospitals, which are all referral hospitals with, for health facilities in their districts. So, so far, already while we are creating these positions, we've already established also the um, uh, career path for our dietitians, so that at least they should move in their career. So we have already done that. And the, also, we, we wish we could even go to the rural hospitals, but the, looking at five years, uh, government plans to go at least to the district level, because we are aware how important this one is. And also looking ahead, what we plan to do as government is to develop guidelines for these dietitians so that they can guide them, the information, education, communication materials, and the, so that they can help in their work. For example, when they are conducting uh, NCDs, clinics such as diabetes or hypertension, I can go on and go on because we are so excited as government, but let me stop there and hand over to Tina. And they will let me also take this opportunity to thank USID, Tufts University, Luana, College of Medicine, and all other stakeholders that have been helping us. I hand over to Tina. Hi, everyone. This is Liz again. Um, I just wanted to introduce Tina uh, for a moment. Uh, she is the Dean of Faculty of Food and Human Sciences at Lalongwe University. Um, she provides overall at the Senate and she's helped us ensure the quality of the dietetics program and has facilitated the development of the newly launched dietetics master's degree. So without further ado, Dr. Tina Minani, thank you. And thank you, Liz, for the introduction. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone, or our participants, wherever you are. I'll be talking about how the dietetics program fits into um, the Faculty of Food and Human Sciences and Luana's vision, and also how Luana responded to the, uh, to the demand for the dietetics program. At Luana, we aspire to be a world-class university and the Faculty of Food and Human Sciences and to improve the lives of Malawians through quality teaching, research, and public engagement in food, nutrition, and human sciences. And we do that for sustainable economic development. And we believe that through this uh, program, the dietetics program, will be able to contribute to research and also uh, socioeconomic development. And because the dietetics program uh, builds on on an already existing uh, nutrition and food science program at Rwanda, which my faculty has been offering for a very long time. However, the introduction of the dietetics program has ensured that we expand and strengthen our scope in terms of influence, because now uh, the institution can uh, conduct research and provide evidence that can influence uh, policy in terms of nutrition clinical nutrition and in terms of healthcare and uh, its associated practices. So through this program at Luana, uh, we, are we are now able to join in the fight against other forms of nutrition other than the uh, conversion, protein, energy, and nutrition. So uh, because our dietetics will be, pro our dietitians rather, will be providing uh, nutrition therapy to patients with a variety of conditions uh, in districts. Uh, hospitals as well as in the communities. And also by training dietitians, uh, Luana is responding to the national goals, uh, just to mention some of the goals that are contained in the National Education Sector Plan for Malawi, which include uh, increasing access to quality education and also providing relevant degree trainings. 
because in this program, uh, we were able to provide scholarships to students who um, may not have been able to support themselves to get such a quality and relevant degree. So, excuse me, on a global level, the didactics program at Luana also contributes to the uh, realization of the sustainable development goals that relates to improving nutrition, uh, improving, uh, providing good health, and also providing quality education. So the demand for the dietetics program has been well known in Malawi, particularly it was expressed by the Minister of Health through the Department of Nutrition and HIV and AIDS. And she, um, my faculty collaborates or has a long uh, history of collaboration with the Department of Nutrition, HIV and AIDS. So as an opportunity rose, uh, Luana together with the partners that Liz already alluded to, uh, developed a concept uh, proposal, developed the curriculum, and then my faculty was mainly involved in having the approved at different uh, committees of the university because university has uh, statutes that will uh, guide how programs are supposed to be developed and certain requirements that the programs are supposed to meet. So my, my faculty was uh, quite uh, involved in that one and I would like to acknowledge the role that uh, my predecessor Dr. Agnes Manguera played in having the program approved when she was dean. So apart from the program being approved by Medical Council, as has already been alluded to, the program also had to be accredited by the National Commission for Higher Education, and that's the role of Luana to have its programs uh, accredited. So just to emphasize that the National Commission for Higher Education is very important in this case, because that's the body that recognizes uh, higher education qualifications in Malawi. So as I talk now, this dietetics program is also accredited by that body here in Malawi. Now, talking about the future and also what we're doing now is that um, because this program is very young, uh, it's a baby in Malawi, we would like to continue with the collaboration and also expand our collaboration because we have learned that the experiences that the different partners bring into the uh, program are very crit critical and also they strengthen uh, the program and also uh, they, they add value in terms of quality and also uh, trust in terms of uh, the program. So we'd like to uh, continue with the collaboration uh, into the future. And also we'd like to continue training uh, dietitians until we get a critical mass. As uh, it has been indicated, we've only had two groups of uh, students who have graduated and the, the, the demand is really high. So we'll continue uh, training dietitians until a critical mass is reached, especially in the critical areas. And we are also building capacity of faculty at Luana because um, sustainability will mean that we have to do uh, some of the critical uh, you know, parts of the training at Luana. Yes, we still need the collaboration, but we also need to build uh, capacity. So uh, with that, I would like to turn over to my friend, my colleague, Alex. And uh, again, this is Liz. Uh, I wanted to just quickly introduce uh, Dr. Calambera. Uh, he's earned his PhD in Applied Human Nutrition from the University of Guelph in Canada. Dr. Alex Calambera is an Associate Professor and Head of the Department of Human Nutrition and Health at La Longue University. He directs the Clinical Dietetics Program, we're grateful for that, with the primary role of facilitating and coordinating program activities, evaluating program delivery, and advising the University on program outcomes, and with that, um, I turn it over to my esteemed colleague, Dr. Alex Calambera. Um, I thank all of you who are attending uh, this webinar from various locations around the world. My talk will focus on selected components of my involvement in program implementation. As uh, Liz has indicated, I'm the head of the Department of Human Nutrition and Health, and therefore we host the program, the dietetic program, 
and implement uh, what Senate resolved. So I consider myself as a frontline worker in implementation of the program because I uh, implement resolutions of University Senate to, for example, advertise the program, uh, packaging adverts for the program, holding meetings with final year students to interest them to join the program. These are nutrition and food science uh, program students. I facilitate meetings of dietitians to have interface meetings with students and get them to answer specific questions regarding career development and other important aspects uh, of uh, being a dietitian. And I also respond to random questions from current students and uh, graduates of our nutrition and food science program, as well as graduates from other programs uh, within the country, uh, those that are contemplating on becoming uh, dietitians. I also oversee implementation of the program, for example, making sure that the dietetics program, when we admit students, is appropriate timetabled. Um, I manage examinations, presiding over examination vetting processes. I receive exams. I invite faculty to vet the exams to make sure that they are up to scale, they are fair, and that they reflect course content as approved by University Senate. Uh, this also includes, I chair also the uh, vetting of the licensure exam, which comes at the end of the supervised clinical practice for the dietetic students. Another role that I uh, critically perform is to supervise administration of exams and ensure that every exam is secure before and after the student sit and coordinate the assessment of all exams that students take in the program. I chair assessment meetings of my department where together we take a look at how students have performed, identify uh, challenges in every course module and uh, give feedback to students as needed. Since my university implemented the program uh, in partnership with the College of Medicine of the University of Malawi, my work involved uh, involves also working with them, uh, colleagues from the College of Medicine, to ensure that they can deliver nutritional biochemistry courses and that the courses are assessed and feedback is given to students. Um, in terms of my personal involvement also, uh, my experience is that I teach nutritional epidemiology. Um, my MSc classes are a little larger uh, than the dietetic student uh, class. Uh, and therefore, because the dietetic students have been largely the first cohort we graduated four, now we are graduating six. This makes the interaction to be much easier. It allows us to get on a one-to-one, -one, more closely relationship uh, of uh, me as an instructor and them as my students and uh, get to know who is progressing well and those that need any kind of support. And being part of the creation of the program itself, as previous speakers have spoken, and right now seeing it to actually uh, take off and uh, see some of our graduates already uh, placed in the hospital system in Malawi, uh, it is a profoundly elating experience. I'm used to develop programs and courses for our regular nutrition programs, but this was an exciting undertaking because it was far more collaborative, involving a number of institutes and the government of Malawi, as previous speakers have already indicated. My perspectives as an educator, uh, when I reflect on the barriers of this program, as uh, has not been indicated, the two cohorts that we have trained so far have run uh, with resources from Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Nutrition. And obviously this is an expensive uh, undertaking and is not sustainable uh, on its own. But I'm quick to say that it is immensely necessary. Necessary because Malawi needs to build a critical mass of dietitians that can quickly undertake dietetic roles in the national economy. The current model therefore allows us to admit Malawians who trained as nurses, who trained as clinical officers, nutritionists, food scientists, and other backgrounds, who hear the dietetic calling, and therefore we need not to stop them, but allow them to pursue their dreams. That said, we are already planning as a university to reduce injection of donor resources into the program by devolving some program costs to the government of Malawi. There are several modalities, uh, for example, changing the program structure to ensure that students can compete for entry into the program as freshmen and fresh women, which then makes them eligible for government loans and grants. Uh, so those are some of the roles that have been uh, 
personally been involved in. And as I exit, I leave you uh, in the abode hands of Dr. John Puka, uh, Dean of the School of Public Health and Family Medicine of the College of Medicine, University of Malawi, who apart from his roles in dietetics is also driving the Malawi COVID-19 response as a co-chair. Through that, I take you back to Liz, thank you. Thank you, Alex. And our final panelist speaker, is Dr. John Fuka. He's the Dean, School of Public Health and Family Medicine at the College of Medicine, University of Malawi. Dr. Fuka co-chairs uh, currently um, the Presidential Task Force for COVID-19, as Dr. Calvara mentioned. Is associate, Dr. Fuka is Associate Professor of Public Health he serves as a chair leading the school in strategic planning, needs assessment, quality assurance, especially in vetting new curricula, which is why we needed him. He serves as the principal investigator for the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Nutrition Activities at the College of Medicine. And um, to that, I turn it over to Dr. John Fuka. Greetings to all, uh, wherever you are in the, uh, in the world. Uh, since I've also been introduced as co-chair of the Presidential Task Force to COVID, I'll start by reporting that uh, we are doing reasonably very well in terms of uh, uh, the COVID uh, fight and response. Our epidemiology shows that uh, we've really sort of uh, gone down to uh, daily numbers to sometimes seeing uh, zero cases uh, as well as uh, the number of uh, uh, bed in, in terms of death has really gone low with uh, improved clinical uh, outcomes, which therefore part of it should be nutrition in nature. What are we doing towards uh, COVID response can be the linkage between uh, COVID response and uh, dietetics. Coming to the topic of the day, uh, I think the, what we have brings us here to report is basically uh, complementarity of uh, capacity and competencies. Maybe individual competencies, uh, then institutional capacity brought together both from Ghana and College of Medicine and then working with the uh, national institutions, uh, national, uh, the government, the stakeholders and other stakeholders, regular bodies residing in where, where uh, we are. Uh, as a lot has already been said, uh, the, the capacity and competence and skills from College of Medicine, of course, included uh, because we're a medical school, our biomedical sciences were really very strong in that uh, component. Therefore, we clearly uh, brought that to the, to the table. The other thing that we brought is our extensive knowledge after uh, over 20 years of uh, uh, medical school with uh, both postgraduate courses, specialization. Therefore, we also brought a uh, uh, capacity of clinical uh, placement. We, I, Idea, our idea is that uh, of uh, uh, clinical teams in the hospital, either physicians, specialized, specialized physicians, surgeons, and so forth, clearly a cross-cutting issue that we're lacking was uh, that of uh, uh, dietitians. So uh, we, our model is that of uh, having teams in the wards to make sure that uh, uh, dietitians also are part of these uh, teams. To this effect, we have a unique uh, uh, placement supervision whereby uh, uh, suddenly here and uh, uh, Bernadette uh, are the other presenters, uh, co-supervised students, which is quite unique uh, 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 innovation. Um, uh, they, the ne next John, um, John, you've gone on mute. Is anybody technical on our team who can unmute John? Um, I unmuted him, but okay. okay. John, can you hear us? Uh, maybe I'm back. Okay. I don't know where I stopped. We Perfect. can hear you. I don't know where I stopped. Anyway, uh, the first part of my presentation was on that of our capacity, what the College of Medicine brings uh, by biomedical sciences, uh, clinical placement and the unique nature of supervision of doctors supervising or dietitians that are clinical placements. 
The, the next thing that we played as a role was that of advocacy, uh, uh, working hand in hand with our colleagues from Rwanda to uh, advocate in the Ministry of Health. And also more interesting was the trip to Cape Town where we saw a 250 uh, grams uh, uh, preterm baby surviving breathing under the intense uh, dietetic uh, care and critical care. I think this just moved everyone. We clearly saw that there was a gap in Malawi. Coming from there, I think that is the genesis in its, in its own of the placements of these as, as job uh, establishment in the, in the post. But we, have, we still uh, have a big challenge because quality breeds uh, uh, other quality questions and capacity issues. So access to uh, a service now is the question. Who will have the access of the few we have developed? And Malawi is largely rural as well. So with that in mind, uh, we, the, the ones that we're producing may best fit central level, maybe this level, uh, rural hospitals, but we need to be innovative to produce new cadres that can go all the way to the rural setup. And this borrows again from the medical practice where we have doctors, medical assistants, others can call them uh, uh, physician assistants and so forth, or nurse, nurse practitioners. How can we do dietetics in a similar manner? It's a big question we have. Learning from that uh, model, we have now a BSc underway at the College of Medicine, but we still have this big question to resolve and answer. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Dr. Fuka. It's now time for question and answer period. Um, so the first question um, that I think is universal, so I have to start with this one from Christine Walters. Thank you very much. Um, and I think I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Fuka and Sanale to and Bernadette um, to weigh in on this one. Um, Christine Walters is asking us, uh, what is the relationship now with the RDs that have graduated and the medical doctors? Um, I know, Sanale, uh, do you want to start? I think in Malawi, we've been very lucky to have a very good relationship with the medical doctors, uh, a good dietetic uh, relationship with the medical doctors. I think that really started with the fact that we engaged them right from the beginning. So we invited them to our journal clubs to get them to understand what we're doing. We invited them to case presentations and we also participated in their events so they asked us to you know do certain things for them and we we always were responsive to doing it and we made sure that the students were also responsive to referrals as well so making sure that you get to patients at the right time and get the right feedback going on to the doctors i think that really promotes respect between the two professions thanks and bernadette um I'd love to hear your, um, yours and John's since you're representing the medical field. Uh, well, to, to Sanala's point, I think we, in, from the beginning, we had deliberate intentions to make sure that we are recognized as part of the medical team. And so by doing this, we mean that even within our student training um, schedules, students are expected to attend all handover meetings by the, with the doctor's team, which means from, from get-go, the doctor recognizes that the, the dietitian is part of the team. And I think we are also privileged to, to come into the hospital at a point that they, the health team already recognized that there was a need for nutrition care. I can give an example for the, burn, the burns unit where they were already trying to come up with guidelines for their unit. And when we came in, they were happy to have someone trained and someone skilled to assist with the care of their patients. So I, I think that's what I can add on to what Sanalea said. And John? Yeah, I, I think the main thing is what uh, Benedetta has just indicated. The, uh, uh, beyond the handovers, even in the world rounds, the, the dream, the vision is that there are uh, the world rounds, uh, there's a team. So there's a clinical specialist, just like they could be a nurse, there has to be uh, a complementary dietitian. And this, you can see clearly that uh, dietetics is a cross-cutting issue. So that is the, the, the clinical uh, practice. But again, let's remember that uh, uh, their practice can go beyond that uh, into public health and other aspects. Again, there the, the role is that of our complementarity. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, this uh, next question, a uh, series of questions uh, that I think I'm going to have Tina and Alex uh, respond to in that order. Um, a lot of the questions around uh, funding uh, beyond uh, the next years and how are you going to, do you have any sustainability plans for the program? Uh, quite an important question. So Tina or Alex, uh, thoughts? Okay, uh, thank you Liz for that question. Indeed a very important question. Uh, at the moment we can say that um, Government is supporting our faculty uh, through uh, enrollments. So these are faculty who were already employed before the nutrition, uh, before the dietetics program uh, came uh, into uh, being. So, but apart from that, government has also provided a space for uh, practice in terms of training. And um, because we realize that there's need for sustainability, at Luana we have started uh, giving capacity of our members of staff who are already employed and on full-time tenure. So we can consider those as being supported by government. But moving into the future, we hope to develop programs that can be supported through government scholarships. For example, if we develop undergraduate programs those undergraduate programs are supported uh, through government scholarships because uh, students can then access uh, loans uh, through uh, a body that is recognized by uh, government. So I think that's what I can say, but uh, Alex can add on to that. Yeah, and so um, thank you very much, Tina. I think the, uh, the response from Tina uh, does look at uh, the issue of sustainability in a much broader way. But as I indicated in my presentation, the issue is that we have recognized the need for sustainability from the way to go, but we have gotten stuck to the model that we have followed in as far as uh, the training is concerned, because um, if we are going to develop an undergraduate program, it will take no less than four years before we get the first graduates out. Our current program takes two years, uh, and therefore within every two years, it means we're producing a few um, dietitians who can be released and begin working, while the bachelor's programs are really uh, working on having mass production and then we can fill the positions. Uh, we are aware in the university about that and what we are doing currently is that we are working on many opportunities that are arising to continue to apply for resources to support the current program which is a postgraduate diploma in clinical dietetics but as she said or we have already uh, plans underway to uh, develop a different program uh, that would still deliver a dietitian but train by using government resources. Uh, that's how I would respond to that. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, this uh, next question, I believe um, I'm going to direct to Sanale and anyone else who would like to jump in. Um, it's around uh, accreditation and um, how we went about accreditation and um, going forward. Um, uh, what process uh, can we if there's anything that we need to change. And then also uh, with that is how will the dietetic, uh, creating a dietetic association help with um, getting accredited, getting continuing education credits. Um, Sanale, do you want to start? And then um, anyone else uh, from our esteemed panel? Okay. So uh, the process of accreditation, and I'm assuming you mean by regulators in a country, like accreditation yes. of a program. Yes. Uh, okay. I think we can start from, you know, the RD exam that uh, everyone has to take um, okay. as well. So, mm -hmm. well, I mean, globally, there are standards for, the, for programs, dietetic programs that we followed, as I said. 
So um, obviously there will be some basic minimum coursework that the students should take for them to be considered dietitians in the first place. And then there's a supervised practice component. So there is a minimum number of hours in different rotations that each student, each students must undertake to be eligible to register as a dietitian and that's the global standard and then they also need to take a, a licensure exam at the end of it so uh, those are the three conditions most countries would follow for dietitians to be accredited in the first place so what we have done in malawi is that we have created and this is for the first time because prior to this we didn't have any uh, accreditation guidelines so when you came in as a dietitian in malawi there was nothing to measure your competencies or your your qualifications against. So what we have done now is that we have developed a uh, standards for that credentialing in the first place. So minimum amount of, we'll look into all these aspects. So minimum amount of uh, coursework that you've done and your hours of supervision and having taken a licensure exam to that. So that's the accredita accreditation question. Um, in terms of create the dietetic association, yes, as I said, there are plans to create the dietetic association and certainly, uh, historically from other countries, dietetic associations do help with the accreditation process. So they are there with, uh, in terms of setting exams and, you know, they certainly have an advisory role to play there. So I do see that the dietetic association will play an advisory role. Indeed, we've already seen them play an advisory role because all these draft regulations that we have, we've drafted with um, dietitians in the country who will form the association. It's an informal association that is already formed actually. If I can just come in on in addition to you, Emily, uh, Bernadette Hillis. Uh, I, uh, on continuous development, I think you didn't touch that. So just to add on that in the documentation that has been, uh, is now with Medical Council on the regulation of uh, dietetics, we have a section on continuous development and our proposition is that we have the the Medical Council regulates the continuous development of uh, dietitians and hoping that the current training institutions will take that over and offer continuous uh, training for continuous development. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks very much both. And I have another important question if quickly uh, perhaps John can um, take this one. Amy Nickerson is asking how we're going to staff in, uh, dietitians in the rural communities. So John or Bernadette? Bernadette, go first. Oh, okay. Um, so I think, I thank you for that question. Just to give a brief background, I believe Janet might, might have said this already. Malawi's health system is set in three levels of, uh, four levels of healthcare service as of recent years. So we have the tertiary uh, centers, and then we have secondary, primary, and then we have the health post. At the moment, what we have is uh, our dietitians are in the tertiary centers, and the government's goal is that as we continue to train larger numbers of dietitians, we're going to cascade down to secondary care, primary care, and hopefully to the, to the health post. However, the challenge is that at the moment we have, we're training uh, dietitians at postgraduate level, so you have the challenge of sending them to the rural areas. And so a discussion has to be uh, had on um, now training dietitians to uh, a, more, a lower level that can cater for primary le level care and uh, health post um, level care. And uh, so you, at this point then, based on the government structure, usually in Malawi as per medical doctors, those that are in the rural areas are those with a bachelor's degree. So if in the future of Malawi, what maybe would be important is to have a bachelor's degree dietitian or something lower than that, that can go to all over, all, all the way down to the health post in the rural areas, the hard to reach areas. I'll hand it over to John now to explain more because John is also involved at national level in terms of uh, human resource for health. Uh, I think Eble uh, answered only to say that uh, uh, that uh, kind of training perhaps is also answers partly to the sustainable uh, sustainability of the program because uh, the government uh, sponsors much more undergraduate programs as compared to the uh, higher level. So we, we need to be much more innovative to, uh, to do the uh, senior level training 
uh, whilst we can easily motivate for the lower ones because the system is already uh, there. So just to complement to that, thank you. Thank you, thank you both. Um, I believe we have time for one more question and I'm going to direct this to Janet. Um, uh, one question from Noel Cassini. He wants to know if uh, there's any plans for career ladder and promoting uh, dietitians now that they're in the workforce. So Janet, I'll let you um, take this. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, and thank you, Noah, for your question. In my presentation, I had indicated that currently the Minister of Health in Malawi was undergoing a functional review. So that worked to our advantage, because in that functional review, what we've done is to already create some career path, especially for promotions for these dietitians, right from the national level, which is the ministry headquarters, and also in the central hospitals where currently they are. So that one we are covered and we're ex so excited because the functional review for the Ministry of Health came just at the right time when we had just started with this dietetic program. So it makes our life easier. Thank you so much. Thank you, Janet. And I love to hear being a dietitian about promotions and career ladders uh, for our profession all around the world. So that's, a, that's great. Um, and I see the time and um, I'm going to uh, stop the questions and answers here. Um, unfortunately, I wish we had more time, um, but I would like uh, our esteemed panelists to just give a reflective comment um, and their thoughts for maybe the future, just 30 seconds. Um, and, and maybe we'll start with Janet again. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. For me, it's all excitement. And what I, I want to see on behalf of Malawi government is that all the facilities should have at least one dietitian if we can't manage to put two. And if we can go even up to the community level so that they can work hand in hand with the nutritionists that are also there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Tina? Uh, thank you, Liz. I think for me, what I can say is that uh, at Luana, through the dietetics program, we've learned and indeed seen that we are living in a global village where partnerships have enormous strength in delivering big goals, especially where human capacity has to be leveraged from different institutions, the strength of partnerships. Thank you. Thank you. Alex? Thank you. Um, for me, I think moving forward, um, trained as a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian, uh, but I'm here uh, putting together a dietetic program. I would like us at the very beginning as Malawi and also other countries that may follow suit, especially in this region, to make sure that uh, dietitians and nutritionists are working together um, because they are responding to a nutrition need at the end of the day and therefore disclose work relationships so that dietitians are not in their own style and then also nutritionists are working alone but together we can achieve a lot uh, in our country. Thank you. Thank you and last John your words. Yeah, I, I, I joked to the first group of students uh, when, when I first uh, met them and I said, I, I, I'm hoping that there will be a day when, uh, when dietitians meet, uh, you will tell me, uh, Dr. Puga, sorry, you are not a dietitian. And uh, it seemed as if that was a joke, but now it seems that it's, it's real and very exciting. And I'm now actually anxious that uh, they may boot me out uh, from their grouping uh, very soon. Thanks that we still want to be collaborating. So uh, I'm at peace just because of collaboration, but we have a future now. Thank you. Thank you, John. That's so funny because uh, actually one of the questions we didn't get to is um, can doctors uh, do uh, nutrition counseling? <laughs> and um, I do want to say yes uh, in Malawi, uh, of course, um, but uh, as Dr. Fuka just mentioned, he wants to be replaced. So we'll be happy as RD professionals uh, to do that and work alongside uh, with all of the healthcare. Um, 
So I want to end the program and the webinar and let you all know that um, please, please uh, make sure uh, to catch all of our webinars. We're going to um, highlight a food composition table in a couple of weeks, our first ever Malawian food composition table. Um, and I know that there were some questions about dietary uh, guidelines, and um, so we'll be addressing that uh, in that webinar. All of our webinars are recorded uh, at nutritioninnovationlab.org. So thank you all so very much uh, for tuning in, and we're so grateful um, to all of the audience participants and to our speakers and our STEAM panel. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.